gentleness is something that is so fundamental to our experience of being a human. It's the way we treat babies. It's the way we approach things that we love and that are delicate. And it is a natural reaction that arises in situations where we are presented with delicacy. Imagine holding a puppy or a newborn. Yet it's also something that we reserve for those times frequently. And I don't know about you, but for most of my life, I was not very gentle with myself. The gentleness was something I didn't ever think about turning inward. Like, what if I treated myself like a newborn? What if I treated myself like a puppy? What if I extended that same gentle, loving kindness to myself? Never crossed my mind. The way I thought I was best going to find a state of happiness in life was being hard on myself, beating myself into it, berating myself for what I wasn't doing and what I didn't have and how I was not. And at its heart, this berating or this being hard on ourselves versus being gentle with ourselves is about judgment. We judge ourselves and then those judgments confirm or deny our lack of worthiness. We don't judge a puppy. We don't judge a newborn. But we feel free to judge ourselves because we have this idea that we should know better. We should already be what we know we want. And because we're not, we're bad. We're not doing it right. And we need to fix the problem of our life. How's that working? <laughs> Didn't ever work for me. Tried it over and over and over again. When we approach our own experience with gentleness, we're able to start seeing beyond the state of our experience. Because states always change. I could be happy one moment, sad the next, angry after that, anxious, joyful, peaceful, horny, you name it. The state of what we're experiencing is constantly changing. Yet, what is that state arising from? What does it come back into? What is prior to that state? Well, with gentleness, we start to touch into that. We start to take experience and see it for what it is, changing states that will always change. And there is no way that I've ever found to create a state that simply lasts. And this was something I just assumed for the longest time and I think many of us do, that I will at some point get to a state that I will be happy and things will be set, and then it's just a free ride home from there. Yay, happy life, done. And that's, I think, an assumption that a lot of us live under. If this changed, then I would have this state, and it would stay there, wouldn't leave. And it would be a good state, not a bad state that I don't want. It's this judgment thing. And it's this manipulation of state. Well, when we start to see that, in effect, states 
have a lot to do with stories. This is the story I'm telling about this moment of what's happening. That's added, right? What the actual state is, is the sensations that are arising. And one of my best friends and I, and Joe, were talking about this this morning, how frequently the same state can be interpreted with an entirely different story. And whether there is gentleness present in that story can determine our experience to a very large extent. I'll give you an example. For most of my life, I fought this deep feeling of worthlessness that would manifest as butterflies in my stomach. Something would be coming up that I was sure I couldn't do, and I would just feel sick. I can feel it just talking about it. Right there in the pit of my stomach, kind of in the front, like an electrical charge that just felt so present. And when I was telling the story of, you're not worthy, that was also painful and annoying and like, maybe I'm going to throw up. And, it, it, and then it starts to go in a loop, right? So the story and the sensation start working with each other. Oh, my stomach. Oh, what is this? this? Oh, what is this? Ah. And the story gets quicker and deeper and the darker. It's like we just retreat into the mind to tell the story. And the sensation is only reaffirming what's happening in the story. When I was looking forward to something, when something good might happen, and I'd get very excited about that, same sensation in my stomach. But now it's like, oh, this is so exciting. What if it happens? What if it happens? Story, 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 story. Story, sensation, story, sensation, story, sensation. And I'm also being a little gentler with myself because I have this sense of specialness now. Like, oh, a good thing is going to happen to me. This is going to get rid of that worthlessness for like a minute. And that's going to be so awesome because I'm exhausted by my own worthlessness. And so we get on that seesaw of shame and specialness and... We feel shameful when we don't get what we want or when we think we're doing it wrong. And we feel special when we get what we want and we think we're doing it right. But again, we're chasing these states, right? Gentleness brings us back to this center, to this fulcrum, to seeing the stories and the sensations for what they are. And there's nothing wrong with any of it. It's just that the suffering becomes optional. Now I don't have to climb on to this story because I see it from this place of gentleness. And that seeing is mindfulness. And this is why the gentle trail to mindfulness was the distillation of everything I had learned in my own 30 years of just chasing spiritual practices and mindfulness practices and looking for the technique. What's the thing that's going to do it? Is a guru going to touch my forehead and give me shakti and then, oh, finally, yay, I see it. Or am I going to learn this one special meditation technique where you got to put your hands just like this and cross your legs just like that, make sure your neck is right. And... No, none of those things worked for me. I'm not saying none of those things work. They may, they may. But what did work for me was gentleness. And the gentleness is the tone that we approach mindfulness practice with. And adding to that tone, curiosity and self-compassion gives us something for the mind to do 
and something for the heart to do, and the gentleness connects them. So the self-compassion opens the heart to ourselves and the world. So where we were judging before, compassion says, it's okay, I don't need to judge this. We're all in this together. It's all right. It's not sympathy, it's not empathy, it is a felt sense that we are all in this together. All of this, the world, each other as people, we're all a part of one thing. And then curiosity says, there's nothing wrong with the mind. There's nothing wrong with stories. This isn't like a broken thing. It's like a hammer. It's a tool. And if you're taking a hammer and banging it against your head all day, it's exhausting and unhealthy and it's no fault of the hammer. But if you take that same hammer and a handful of nails and a bunch of boards, you can build yourself a house. And there's no, there's no pain. You're using that hammer correctly. Well, curiosity allows the mind with compassion and gentleness to go deeply into our present moment experience and say, what is this? So there's this acceptance that we start with. This is what it is right now in this moment. Whatever combination is happening, whatever sensations in the body, whatever stories in the mind, whatever state of experience we're having, we can stop and ask ourselves, what is this? Prior to that, we can start with a gentle acceptance of saying, this is what it is right now in this moment. And this brings us back to mindfulness in every moment. And it's why I created the gentle trail to presence, because it incorporates these three things in their rawest, most simplest form. And Sure, there are lots of things we can go deeper into, but when it comes to mindfulness, the most important thing is gentleness. I don't see how without gentleness, there can ever really be mindfulness. You can't push mindfulness, you can't pull it, you can't beat yourself into it. So when we start with that gentleness, we find a way a trail to knowing who we are. And that trail is an exploration, like any trail. It isn't about the destination. It's about the journey. So mindfulness is about taking a trail with an open heart and an open mind, a curious mind, an open heart, and a gentle touch.